In this video, I'll talk about being a good ally in the gaming community. Pretty recently, Dawn made a video all about gatekeeping and some of the experiences that she's had as a, a woman in the gaming community and that she's seen as well as like dealing with gatekeepers. I wanted to do this video in order to give my thoughts on the issue on gatekeeping and sort of the idea of being an ally. How are you a good ally and helping to keep other people safe from gatekeepers or dealing with gatekeepers if, like me, you're coming from a place of presumed privilege. I mean, I am a white, cis male. I have a whole lot of privilege, like just in general, but especially in the gaming community. And so when I think about gatekeeping and some of the stuff that I see in this community that I love so much, um, I feel like I have a responsibility to be a good ally and to see stuff and say stuff. And so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about in this video. One of the first things that I think is important to know as far as being a good ally or being helpful or not being a part of the problem is understand your perspective. Where are you coming from as far as being an ally? And I think it's really important to not, don't try to be the hero. That's not what being a good ally is. It's not about I don't think I don't think that it's about looking around your table and saying, "I know what I need to do. I need to protect that girl that's at our table. I need to speak up and be the voice of reason for the people of color that are at my table." Like I, that, that doesn't that doesn't make you a good ally. That that that's that's a weird headspace to be in. And it may be coming from a really good intention of being like, I'm here, I want to help. But I think instead of trying to play the hero, you need to be you need to play support. You need to be a really good support character. You should be the one that's there to give out buffs, right? And what I mean by that is like if, if you're in situations like during a break or before a game or between sessions, if there's someone at their table that has expressed like, I was a little uncomfortable with that joke or, you know, a lot of the, the orcs all come across really sort of racially homogenous and it's a little inappropriate. I think instead of trying to play the hero and fix things, it's the idea of letting those folks at your table know, say, if you want to say something, if you say something at the table, um, I've got your back. If you bring things up to the GM or if you want to, you know, confront, not aggressively, but confront that player who keeps making those those inappropriate jokes during a break, um, I'll be there for you if you want it. It's about being good support and not about being the one that's trying to play the hero. And this video, I don't have all of the answers. I'm not trying to play the hero and say, this is how we're going to fix all of it in gaming um, and in our community. But these are just some of the things that I think are really good tools and things to keep in mind if you do want to be a part of the solution for the problems and the gatekeeping that we have. And the first thing that you've got to do is speak up. And it can be really uncomfortable. It can be really awkward. But I think if we're going to help to change the culture and make the culture better, make the community better. We, especially those of us that are coming from a place of privilege, we have to be comfortable and get better at speaking up. When we see a GM that makes all of their orcs a real racial stereotype, we've got to say something, even if it's not us, even if it's not our race that they're stereotyping. If we have other players that's just always playing the, you know, bard that's horny on main and makes inappropriate and, 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 and awkward, just sexual comments and jokes, even if they're not towards our character. And honestly, even if we think that they're funny, um, being aware that that can be a very uncomfortable situation for others and saying stuff. Now, again, you know, go back, rewatch that thing about not playing the hero, but using your voice and saying, hey, you know what, I, you know, all of your orcs kind of do this, or all of your female characters all act the same way. Um, I was at a game in 
Indianapolis uh, for Gen Con a few years ago, and it, it it sucked. It was a it was a system that I wanted to play so much, and our GM, every woman in his game. Every NPC that that GM had that was a woman was either a slut or a bitch. And and, and I know that, that that's some really jarring language to use. Uh, I don't use it casually. I'm, I'm using it on purpose. All of his characters were either described as sort of the busty, lascivious bar wench that was trying to sleep with every character and making these... It, it, it was gross. Or there were these overly aggressive assertive like mean antagonistic women that were playing into this stereotype of 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 like i said like he either made his women absolute bitch characters that nobody wanted to interact with and it felt like it was on uh, like for a reason or they were just these blow up sex dolls that happen to interact with your character that's not okay that's not an okay thing to have at a table, especially a table of, of strangers, an open forum table like what the pickup games and the um, and the, the ticketed games at Gen Con are like. And like, it's not cool at all. And I tried to say things a couple of times at the table and um, Dawn ended up speaking. She was like, you know what? This isn't fine. Um, something got said to her character and she was like, you know, this isn't okay. Please don't, that's, you can't talk to me that way. And I, as a player, am really uncomfortable with what you're doing. And like, it toned down a little bit, um, but it didn't solve the problem. But we've got to say stuff when those sorts of things happen. So you have to use your voice, even if it's not comfortable. Some of the things that you can also do at the table to use your voice, some some things to have in your back pocket that I find work really well, is to sort of point out when stuff happens and use that other player's name, all right? Now, and this isn't just for like, oh, well, introducing uh, women to a t table. Of course, there's lots of women that are players, uh, but can work with anybody that's new to the table. So something that I like to do is making sure that they're included, right? So when the comes back around to me, if I see that Matt, who's new, hasn't said much, um, I'll take the spotlight off of me for a second and say, you know what, I'm really interested in seeing what Matt says. And so, um, you know, my character goes over and says, you know, hey, what is it that you think that we ought to do next? You're from this city. Take that spotlight and shine it on somebody else for a moment, making sure that they're being included, calling them out by name, that lets everybody else at the table know that, hey, this person's getting overlooked, but it also lets Matt, in this hypothetical situation, know that, hey, I'm here for you. I see that you're getting skipped, and um, and I wanna make sure that you're being included. And a way of doing that that's a little bit more of a specific call out is to mention when people are getting talked over and interrupted. Now, you don't have to call people out by name, right? You don't have to say, you know, hey, David, you're talking over the top of Jennifer. Stop it. You don't have to do that. Um, but we can sit there and say, when it comes around to me and I've got the chance to speak or something like that, I can say, hey, Jennifer, I know you got interrupted a while ago. Um, do you want to do you want to go back and tell us what it is that you're trying to say? Again, all of us at the table know who interrupted Jennifer. And maybe it was an accident. Right? Maybe in that situation, David's like, oh gosh, I didn't mean to interrupt somebody. I didn't mean, you know. And then that could be a conversation between David and Jennifer later on. Maybe it was an accident, but using your voice and being specific, it's a great way to help with the gatekeeping at the table. A part of calling others out or calling others in, that's something that Don talked about in the last episode, it's going to happen to you. It happens to me, right? Like I try to be a good ally, but sometimes I say the wrong thing. I use the wrong term. I talk over the top of somebody else. Um, I hog the spotlight a little bit too much. And if I get called out, it doesn't do me any good. It shuts down all the good work I try to do. If I sit there and I say, oh, oh, no, I would never do that. I'm an ally. I am somebody that's here to make sure that everybody feels safe and included. So if that's how you took it, I'm really sorry, but that's not what I meant. That's not being a good ally, right? I mean, even if you feel that way, 
I think the best thing that we can do, the best thing you can do in those situations is go, oh, okay, I'm, I'm really sorry. Not what I intended, but it's what happened. I'm sorry. And leave it at that and be cognizant, be aware, and try not to let it happen again. We're even asking the other person, be like, oh, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to make anyone feel uncomfortable with the joke. Is there something that I can do better? Like ask for that and accept what you're told. Even when we don't agree always, accept what you're told in that moment. If, if we want to try to get better, then we have to accept that criticism when it does come our way. In Don's video, Boyan Penev, Panev, Penev, whatever, Boyan had something that was really kind of cool to say. Um, they went on and they said, you know, gatekeeping sometimes has its place because maybe you've got someone who's a, a huge anime fan and that's the character they want to play, but that's not the type of system it's in. Or maybe you've got someone who's a not so veiled Nazi wannabe and they keep showing up to your Warhammer game. I like that Boyan brought that up because to me, that's not gatekeeping. Right. So for me, gatekeeping is when you have somebody that says this game isn't for you because you're different, because you haven't been playing it. And so you don't get to play uh, or or it's somebody that says, oh, prove to me that you're enough of a geek to play this game like that's gatekeeping. I think what Boyan's talking about is making sure that the game is good for everybody. If I have a player that loves anime, anime, like they're a huge uh, One Punch fan and that's the type of game that they want to play, but I'm going to be running a I don't know, Vampire the Masquerade political intrigue game. I don't think it's gatekeeping to say, um, hey, I know you're new to this game system. Let's talk it out and make sure that this is the right game for you. Um, and either change your ideas of your character or let's find you the right group that you can be a part of. Um, that's not saying, no, you don't understand this game, you don't belong. It's it's making sure that they, that they do, that they're set up well to have a good time. And in the case of the like neo-Nazi Warhammer, which I love Warhammer and that kind of, those kind of people, that's a problem. It's a problem in the community. Saying I will not have somebody who glorifies the Third Reich at my table, that's not gatekeeping. That's accountability. That's saying this is ugly and nasty and does not belong in our hobby, so go away, right? I think at a, at a certain point, this goes beyond empathy and it goes beyond being polite. And it goes to the point where we have to look at the people in our communities that are mean and nasty and um, misogynistic and hateful and they're gamers. And we have to say, look, that doesn't belong in our in our community. And if you want to sit and play a game that glorifies uh, white supremacy or glorifies beating women or glorifies these nasty things, then um, it's not our job as, by creating tolerant tables to allow for intolerant people to be there. The tolerance paradox. Go look it up. It's an interesting idea. At a certain point, how do we deal with gatekeeping? Well, we try to educate, we try to talk, and if none of that works, we say, get out. Hate has no home in this community. Um, and I don't think that that makes me hypocritical whatsoever. Clearly, some pretty awful folks that have given us commentary think that, but uh, I think that that's wrong. And we deal with gatekeepers by trying to help them out by trying to say this is what we do, by trying to make the community better. And if they won't budge, we say there's no place for you here. Because at the end of the day, holding people accountable isn't cancel culture. We can love a flawed game. We can love a flawed system. We can love a flawed hobby and want to work to make it better by saying here are some of the problems, let's work on them. And I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind.
So what are some of the ways that you try to be a good ally? What are some of the ways that you, maybe from a place of privilege, try to make sure that the gatekeeping doesn't happen nearly as much in your tables or in your communities? I'd love to hear some of those respectful conversations in the commentary below. A special thanks to all of our patrons and especially to Alicia. Go check us out at patreon.com slash roll for initiative. Thanks everybody for watching, especially to our patrons. If you like these kinds of conversations a little more in depth, maybe a little bit heavier, let us know. Follow us on our socials, engage with us there. Um, and if you really like this channel and you want to help us out in the most direct way possible, then head over to our Patreon. That's the thing that really helps us to grow and continue to make videos. So until next time, I'm Ryan, and this is Roll for Initiative. Bye. I'm ready. Are you gonna? Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I'll bark at that image and try to attack the person that's on the other side of the screen.